What's up guys and gals? Been a while since I had a video. Been a while since I've been able to make one. I uh, haven't really been doing much but working here in the past few months. Uh, all this COVID stuff and whatnot going on uh, and craziness in the world. But today I have been able to get something together to be able to make a video for you guys. It does involve a charger and these SL1 LED headlight bulbs. Now the Hellcat, as most of you should know, does have factory HID. This charger just has standard halogen bulbs and they're horrible. And I can't see at night in this car hardly. Like if, if especially if the roadway is wet or it's a little bit foggy or misty outside, it's, it's over with. But we're about to solve that problem with these bad boys. So, the reason I went with Diode Dynamics, A, plug and play, everything plugs in and fits under the dust boot. No modifications, you don't have to cut nothing, you don't have to change anything with the car, you just plug them in. Second, these things have an adjustable collar, and when you adjust them the way the headlight, the way the LED bulbs are positioned properly, then you don't get that crazy glare that you get with cheap LED headlight bulbs when you change out from halogen that blinds people on the road. I hate that. So these shouldn't do that. Plus, once I've put them in the car, I'm going to re-aim the headlights and make sure, and that's, that's an important step that when people buy different headlight bulbs that are brighter, even if you go to a HID bulb from a halogen bulb, you have to re-aim your headlights. Your headlights are gonna be shining too high up in the sky. And if you've got a reflector housing and you have a cheap aftermarket bulb, it's not gonna work out. It just blasts light everywhere. And what happens is it reflects off the bottom of that reflector housing up into the air into the other driver's faces. So these lights are designed not to do that. Uh, they work well in reflector housings as well, uh, but with this charger and the cutoff that you get with the projector housing, shouldn't be a problem at all. Uh, shouldn't have to worry about getting flashed even though I get flashed right now in this thing with the halogens. I don't understand it because they're so dim. I don't even know how anybody, I mean, maybe they're flashing me to let me know that I'm there. I don't know. But anyway, let's get started on putting these bulbs in. Opening the box. Again, great packaging with Dio Dynamics as usual. Got some instructions here. And the bulbs. Again, DOT safe. They'll be brighter than the factory halogens, which is what I'm wanting. A cleaner cutoff line, so you don't have to worry about, you know, blinding lights, stuff like that. And I will be able to see. That's the most important part. You want to, the reason people upgrade their headlights other than those crazies that put blue lights and stuff like that in their cars. I don't even understand. The, the visibility goes down with those colored lights. I don't know if people realize that, but these right here are, I believe 5,500 or 6,000 K, uh, which will be a clean white light. Uh, they should have a nice sharp cutoff line, which means that the light cuts off at a certain point. It doesn't rise up. That's what helps out with not blinding other drivers. And one thing that does that is the projector headlight housings that they put in Dodge Chargers. Uh, you know, it'll be the same what's on the Hellcat here. But the way that they have these set up, <clears throat> everything will fit under the dust boot. Like I said, no modification necessary to anything. You just unplug your stock bulb, plug these in. They are polar sensitive. So they have a little retainer on both sides. So if you plug it in one way and it doesn't work, just turn it around and plug it in the other way. These are 9005 bulbs. They have a high quality heat sink and fan on the bulb itself and an outboard igniter. That helps keep the temperatures down on the bulb itself and the LEDs from Diode Dynamics. And the way that these bulb, these LEDs are situated, and I know what you're thinking, there's not but you know, six very small LEDs on this. How can it be any brighter? Well, I'm telling you, it's gonna be. What you're looking for for brightness is you have a focused beam. 
So that's what you want. You don't want to just blast light all over the place in front of you. You want light on the road in front of you so you can see the roadway. That's the whole purpose behind this, guys. So when you spend this much money on bulbs, that's what you're buying. You're buying the engineering to make sure that it puts light on the roadway in front of you instead of just puking light in front of the car and blinding everybody on the road and still not helping your visibility out at all. There should be a difference between low beam and high beam on your headlights. If you turn your high beams on and there's no difference after you've bought aftermarket bulbs, you need to adjust your headlights or get some better bulbs, you know, because you're blinding everybody. If you turn your brights on, there's no difference between dim and bright. That means that you're probably blinding everybody on the road. I mean, wise up, folks. Okay, so on this side, and this is the passenger side of the vehicle, what you're gonna have to do is get right down here. Now, for those of you who don't know, this right here is your headlight up and down adjustment. This is right here. You can come down through this hole with a very long screwdriver and turn this bad boy. And it's got instructions right here that tells you you're raising the headlight or lowering the headlight. So that's how you adjust your headlights. So there's no left or right adjustment on a Dodge Charger. It's just up and down adjustment. So back here, what we're working with, I don't know if you can see it, is this dust cover right here. Let's see if I can get it focused a little bit better. There's a dust cover right there and it turns just like a, any nut or bolt, it's counterclockwise to pop it open. So I'm gonna go ahead and pop that bad boy off and then we're gonna get started taking the old bulb out and I'll show you how to do your clocking on the bulb to make sure that you don't get any glare out of these new bulbs. So on these caps, it's best if you turn both sides of the cap. So you see these fins on the cap here. There's a fin, let's see if I, I can't get my hand in it. There's a fin right here. And then there's one on the other side. It's easier if you turn both of those fins. If you just work one side of the cap, it's gonna get hung up. So I hope I can explain that because there's no way for me to film myself taking it off. But uh, I'm gonna go ahead and get this off and we'll move on. So there's the cap, it comes off just like so. Those are the two sides I was talking about. Here's the underneath of the cap. Again, this is standard Dodge Charger kind of stuff. So it locks in, it's got a nice rubber O-ring that really does nothing because there's moisture even inside these headlights on the 2020. And on the Hellcat too, I can see where there was moisture. You can't really see very clearly, but there's the hole, I can't get in there, where the headlight bulb is down in there. And it's just to the right of the adjuster. Uh, but you, you have to look at how the bulb is clocked, okay? So the factory bulb sits in the housing like this sideways. We need this bulb to sit like this so you get proper distribution of light without glare off of this bulb. It needs to be straight up and down. So let me show you how I'm going to clock the bulb here. So I'm gonna take this bulb out and then we'll get over here to the bench and I'll show you how we, we get them clocked to be the way they're supposed to be. Okay, so I've got the factory bulb out here. And like I said, it was turned sideways like this in the car. And that's the way it was sitting in there. So if you notice the fins line up the same on this one, but I need it to be turned straight up and down like this, okay? So the way it locks into place, I'm gonna have to adjust this car. So how you do that is you take a small pick such as this or your finger or whatever you can use and get this O-ring off of the stock, off of this uh, LED bulb. That reveals this little set screw. There's only one, there's nothing on the other side. Then you'll take that little set screw out and you'll be able to adjust the collar. Okay, so I need my bulb to be straight up and down, and I know it sits like this. So I'll pull the collar up and adjust it till it's straight up and down, and then put this collar back. That should have it. I gotta put my screw back in this other side. Oh, 
Oh man. Right, so holding, holding the outer collar, I need to get the inner collar on because the screw holes on this side. But that's okay because the outer collar is what locks the bull bin. So hopefully I'm still gonna have it in its straight up and down orientation. Yeah. All right, so if you can see these little bumps on the bulb, see how this one's sideways and the bumps almost exactly as this, as it's up and down, that's, that's what I want. I want this aftermarket bulb to be straight up and down. You don't want light protruding out of the top and the bottom of the bulb, you want it out of the side so it's a focused beam out on the roadway. Very important, guys. I hate people with blinding headlights and it's against the law. Okay your rubber o-ring back on and then we're just going to install it in the car just like we would a regular halogen bulb another note about halogen bulbs don't touch the bulb itself because the oils from your fingers can create hot spots on the bulb and cause them to prematurely burn out in that area so on halogen bulbs yeah you can wear gloves if you want to i just never really liked wearing gloves i can't hardly feel anything even with rubber gloves so we get these in the car remember these are polarity sensitive so if you plug it in one way and the bulb doesn't work turn this connector around plug it in the other way so i don't know if you can see it there's i know you can see the the plug here make sure that you got it all plugged in all this stuff will go inside of the headlight housing without any issues there's plenty of room in there and then you put this dust cover back on it because it protects from dust and moisture and then you'd be done. So let's see, before I do that, make sure that I've got it plugged in correctly. <laughs> I mean, the difference is clear, guys. And that cutoff line, that's what I mean. You can see there's just a smooth cutoff line. And it, and it does it even with the halogen as well. But, uh, Lord of mercy. I, I mean, I can't wait to get back on shift and actually be able to see. I mean, the difference is crazy on these bulbs. All right, so I'm going to get this stuff kicked back into the housing here, get this dust cover put back on, and then we'll move on to the driver's side, which is a little bit more involved, but it's like two bolts, no big deal. On this side, what we have to do is remove the air box there's one bolt here, 516, same thing on this one right here. Just loosen this up, take this bolt out. There's one like, uh, there's a push, kind of rubber push pin deal in the back. Just pops right out. It's the only thing holding the air box in. So I'm gonna go ahead and take this bad boy out. And just like that, clear access to behind the headlight. Turn the light on on this. There we go, should be able to see it. That's a good view of this right here. And to pop it out, it's lefty loosey. Let's see, to the one side, this side. And just pops loose, comes right out. And that's your bowl. That's how, I mean, it's not very difficult to change headlight bulbs in these chargers. And as we can see on this one, it is rotated. Ooh, that's got like up to the, up to the right position. So it's going to be a little bit hard to clock this one, but still not too bad. As long as I can see how it sits in the headlight factory, I'll be able to clock the other bulb straight up and down. 
key. And again, that's to keep glare. It's a very important step. You can't just throw these LEDs in here. You will not get the results that you want out of it, which is more light on the roadway, not more light in other people's faces. Okay, so here I have the stock bulb and its orientation was up and to the right in the car, just like this. And we need it to be straight up and down. So same kind of thing. Just go to your Dial Dynamics LED here. Get this rubber O-ring off. Take your screw out. Okay, and we have it like this. And again, these fins, they orientate these collars or they're exactly the same as the stock bulb. So this right here is as simple as it can get. You just take the inside collar, take it out, hold the outside collar and rotate it till it's straight up and down. Once you get it straight up and down, you put this collar back on. Make sure you line up the hole with the screw. Bam. All right, so that locks it. Go ahead and put the little screw back in. It's a little Phillips. Put the gasket back on, or the O-ring rather. And that, you can look at the outside fins here. That will have this bulb straight up and down like what we need it. Again, don't touch halogen bulb. So I'm gonna go get this, put in the driver's side, and then I'll be able to show you with this all tucked in in the, in the dust cover back on because the driver's side, I got a little bit more visibility for filming. All right, so here's everything tucked in. As you can see, the bulb's straight up and down. Everything's inside the housing. There's plenty of room in the housing for that little igniter, and that helps with heat to have that outboard igniter. Uh, pretty sure I said that before, but just in case you were wondering, dust cover here. We'll go right back over the top of this. I'm gonna go ahead and get that in. We go dust boot installed, all sealed up. Everything's working good. Let me put this air box in, and we'll do the final results. All right. So just to do a comparison between the factory HIDs in a charger compared to these diode dynamic SL1s. That's the factory HID and the Hellcat. And that is the SL1s. I mean, I think the SL1s have a much cleaner cutoff line than the factory HID headlights do. They might have a more intense bright spot in the middle but these have a more clear and defined cutoff and they have a better color and that's the factory hid it's more of a yellowish color Probably, i think it's 4300k and these leds are 5000 let's see here yeah these LEDs, I really prefer, it's just a bright white look with no, it's not blue, no hint of blue. It's just a bright white LED look. Now, of course, these still have to be adjusted. I'll probably adjust them down just a little, uh, but man, I'm excited. I'm excited to actually be able to see when I'm driving at night. All right, so that's just a quick little video on this Dodge Charger with the HID SL1s from Diode Dynamics. Nice clean cutoff line. I'm gonna enjoy being able to see at night now. Like I said before with the factory halogens, I mean, I really could not hardly see at nighttime, even on a very dark roadway, if the roadway was wet on blacktop, when it was like a really dark blacktop. I mean, it was horrible. I mean, I, I had to do something. So I had to buy some headlight bulbs. I uh, went back and forth uh, on getting like Sylvania, the, uh, what is it? Silver Star Ultras. 
they're like 70 bucks or 75 bucks, something around in there at the auto parts store. These were 150. These come with a three year warranty. The uh, reviews on the uh, Sylvania bulbs were actually like, they didn't last, but like a year. A lot of people saying like a year or two and they were gone. Uh, and I don't think there's a warranty on those that I'm aware of, but with these you get a three year warranty. So if something happens to the bulb, Dial Dynamics always stands behind their products. That's another reason I love using that company. So that's a 2020 Dodge Charger and putting the headlight bulbs in, it's going to be exciting. Now I still have to re-aim these bad boys and make sure that they're, they're low enough because usually when you buy brighter bulbs, you have to lower your headlights just a tad. Uh, but I'm going to go ahead, get an owner's manual, see how many inches at how many feet the light's supposed to be and measure it out and make sure that they're aimed properly. And usually I aim mine a little bit low, especially on the driver's side. One, it helps keep you from blinding anybody. Two, it just puts more light on the roadway in front of you, okay? So anyhow, thanks for watching the videos, guys. I really appreciate each and every one of you. Um, there's more stuff to come. I have this throttle body over here. I might, I took it apart. I've got a bad throttle control motor in it. And this is for the Hellcat over here. And I might have to take it back apart again. I'm getting a uh, code on this. Uh, if y'all want to see me take this bad boy apart so you know how to take apart a throttle body for a Dodge, just let me know and I'll, I'll probably shoot a quick video on that. Other than that, Thanks for watching. Appreciate you guys. See you next time.